Thank you, Mr. Ivory. Mr. Hunt, you're recognized for five minutes. I'm going to say the choir part out loud because we all know exactly what's going on here. It wasn't a fully automatic machine gun that was banned in 1986. It wasn't the bump stock. It certainly is not the pistol brace. And it is not the AR-15 of which I am the owner of multiple. The left has been chipping away at our Second Amendment rights for decades, and I'm sick of compromising. Every time my colleagues on the right compromise on guns, the next thing the left says is, we need to do more. And if the left can't repeal the Second Amendment, then they'll have an unelected bureaucrat like yourself, sir, issue a regulation that will make 40 million Americans felons overnight. That's a fact. Compromising on our fundamental rights is not going to keep our children safe either. Our children should not be prey for homicidal maniacs. And our schools should not be safer, should not be as safe as we have here in Congress. They should be far safer than what we have right now. And if we're, spilling, if we're, if we're willing to spend $113 billion in Ukraine, then we could pay to keep our children safer. So gentlemen in the corner, thank you, sir, for standing in the corner with a gun. And I feel safer by his presence already. And every school should have you present. I was in high school when Columbine happened, and prior to Columbine, we didn't have the level of violence that we're seeing today. In 1986, you can walk into a store anywhere in this country and buy a fully automatic weapon. And being from Texas, acquiring a weapon has always been relatively easy in my lifetime. Were there more or fewer mass shootings across our country when machine guns were available? I think we all know the answer to that but we still weren't having these problems because it's not the guns, it's our core values that have plummeted. The left has been chipping away at our rights for years, they've also been chipping away at our core values. In 1960, 61% of black Americans were married. Today, that number has plummeted to 30%. I am a current member of Congress today because I was raised in a two-parent household. We ate dinner together every single night. We prayed before dinner. We attended church every single Sunday. My parents were heavily involved in my education. I said the Pledge of Allegiance every single day proudly, and I know every word to God Bless the USA by Lee Greenwood. Because of these values, my sister, my brother, and I all graduated from West Point. We all served our country Honorably, there's 60 years worth of military service just in my immediate family, which is by definition the American dream. It's because of these values. A recent Wall Street Journal survey came out, and it kind of confirmed these decline in our core American values over the course of the past 25 years. The question was, is what values are viewed as, quote, very important? Patriotism. In 1998, 70% survey felt like patriotism was very important today, 38%. Religion, 62%, very important today, 39%. Having children, 59% in 98, 30% today. Community, 62% in 98, 27% today. The guns haven't changed. The guns have always been available in the United States. Our society has changed, and it's changed drastically, in my opinion, for the worse. So where does that leave us today? There's a reason why crime and gang violence is up. There's a reason why black women are the fastest growing demographics of gun owners in America. You know that, sir. Many of them live in Democrat-run cities with rising crime rates and district attorneys that put criminals ahead of innocent women like we see in New York. And by the way, it's not their husbands or their significant others that are purchasing guns for them. Black women are purchasing guns themselves because we know that Democrats replaced black husbands with Uncle Sam a long time ago. I've been listening to my colleagues on the left talk about guns all day. You have no idea what you're talking about. I fear that if you can't tell me the difference between a man and a woman, I am not surprised that you don't know the difference between 556 and 300 blackout. The problem with this administration is always having people that are appointed to run these agencies that aren't fully qualified, that don't understand exactly what's going on and how things work. 
And if I were running the ATF, I would know a thing about the F in ATF. And by the way, for the record, that's firearms, sir. It's firearms. And with that, I yield back. Thank you, gentlemen. Chair recognizes Mr. Van Drew for five minutes. Thank you, Chairman. Just before I begin, I didn't